Okay, so we have here uh, our guest for the day, Jeff Beatty. Uh, he's a localization manager with Mozilla. Jeff, how are you doing today? Good, thanks. No problem. Uh, so, can you explain what a localization manager does and your role within Mozilla? Um, sure. So, um, a localization manager, they are very similar to an operations manager. Usually, they are overseeing the operations related to ensuring that software or, or web-based products are delivered in as many languages as they can mm -hmm. they can be um, they oversee people so they they'll often people manage um, but sometimes if there's just one of them if there's just that person is the sole localization manager then they'll wear a lot of different hats um, and they'll do a little bit of localization engineering a little bit of project management a little bit of strategy um, advising to, to executives, that sort of stuff. Um, my role within Mozilla, so I'm the, the head of localization, which is part of the Firefox org. Uh, there are three main organizations within within Mozilla. Um, there's mm -hmm. Firefox, there's Open Innovation, and there's Emerging Technologies. Sorry, so can you repeat I'm, that second one? Sorry, you kind of cut out there, the second one. No, it's fine. Open Innovation. Oh, Open Innovation, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm part of the Firefox org, and I'm I lead a team of uh, I, to get all together we are nine, soon to be ten people, um, and we are responsible for making sure that Firefox and pretty much anything that is developed for an international audience or created for an international audience within Mozilla uh, that it is translated or localized for the intended audiences. Um, we manage over a hundred localizations of Firefox, um, all uh, donated to us by communities of volunteers all around the world. Okay, uh, so for those that don't know, can you go into the difference between translation and localization real quick? Translation is a component of localization. It's literally the act of transferring meaning from one language to another, so it's exclusively written or text-based. Uh, localization, while it focuses a lot on text, it's the, the translation of the text is one piece of the bigger picture, which not only is translating the text, but ensuring that the text fits within the space allotted for it in a user interface, making yeah. sure that if it's in a uh, different script than the source language. So, for example, um, Cyrillic script instead of Latin script, mm -hmm. um, making sure that those characters in that script render properly, um, making sure that every text element within a user interface is available to be localized or to be translated um, and not hard-coded and inaccessible to translators, uh, a lot of stuff like that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So basically you just don't want those garbage characters to show up, right? Yeah, that's that's one part of it. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I've been able to um, uh, help with Mozilla a little bit, um, you know, with what you were mentioning earlier, the volunteers for the translation. Uh, so how would you say that's going on um, right now? How do you think you guys are doing um, with your localization of the languages? And what would you say uh, your goal would be with that uh, localization? We've been consistently adding new languages to Firefox over the last three years. Uh, so there are new communities that are popping up, new language communities popping up, and new volunteers that are getting involved. Uh, we've streamlined the process so that you, you everybody accesses a singular point to be able to translate content from Mozilla, and that's all in our translation management system called Pontoon, mm -hmm. um, which is a web-based tool. So web-based collaborative tool where people can just sign into a, an account and start translating. Um, that, that has made things a lot easier for new people to come and contribute. And we found 
that organically that has created a renewed interest in localization at Mozilla. Um, there was some research done by the Open Innovation Group into uh, the size of the Mozilla community as a whole and what people self-identify as contri being contributors to or, or what parts of the organization they self-identify with. Um, and localization was the third largest uh, functional contribution area um, in Mozilla, very, very close behind Firefox. Um, so contributions to localization are, are growing and we are extremely pleased to be able to offer Firefox in more languages than any of our competitors can or do. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so mm -hmm. right now, what, what languages do you need the most help with? You know, I, I struggle answering that question largely because every language needs help. <laughs> we, we can really use help from anybody with any language skill that wants to come in and dedicate the time to helping. The hardest thing that we find is uh, consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, volunteers that consistently for a period of time are reliable and there and participating. Um, that ultimately is what we prefer to do because localization is a specialized field. Um, people have to be mentored. They have to be trained to be able to make contributions and to and be successful in making those contributions and have an impact. Um, it, it's not really, localizing Firefox does, is not really a good crowdsourcing activity where someone some random person can just come in, translate a string, and then leave and, and never come back. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't gain anything from that, and neither does the individual. Um, but if I were to say a few languages, um, we recently made a call. I'm pulling this up on online just to remind myself which languages we called out. Okay. Uh, we called out Swahili. Uh, we called out Americ. Um, we also called out Assamese, Interlingua, Lao, um, Latgalian, Maithili, Malayalam, uh, Nepali, and Tagalog. Uh, I know that we also need help with German and with European Spanish. Um, but generally speaking, if you have language skills and you're interested in you know, making contributions and, and developing a skill set with us, then we are very interested in making space for you and um, finding places where you can be impactful. And what about the people that are good with uh, programming? You want those people as well, right? Yeah, but for uh, for a very different reason. I mean, it's, it's helpful um, to have some technical background. Um, but we also develop localization technologies, like Pontoon is open sourced, um, so anyone can come in and help develop it and make it better. Um, we also have a localization framework called Fluent, which does something that no other localization framework does, and that is loads uh, user interface text at runtime instead of um, building that text or those text files into the software package that you download and install onto your computer. Instead, you can, we can deliver strings, we can deliver text at any given moment while the, while the program is running rather than in the singular moment when that program is being built. Um, so those two areas of technology are, are places where people with language skills and coding background uh, can really come in and, and learn some cool things and, and contribute to cutting edge technology. Yeah, uh, do you want to go a little bit more into the open source that you mentioned? Because you guys are big on that, right? Yeah, so open source is the methodology of developing software where you prioritize collaboration and transparency over um, I'm trying to think of the non non charged words <laughs> <laughs> rather than um, more proprietary uh, or closed environment non collaborative um, 
methods to developing software. So we make our our source code available publicly for okay. anyone to come and download and tweak and adjust and fix problems that they find uh, in order to customize Firefox to make it their own. Um, and then if those changes happen to benefit everyone else that uses Firefox, they can submit them to our code base and have employees review them or fellow community members review them, um, approve them, and have their fixes or their feature development that they have contributed reflected in every installation of Firefox around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that we do is, is open source. It's done with transparency in mind and the intent to collaborate with a large set of people around the world. So other web browsers don't really do that, correct? Other major browsers? Um, Internet Explorer has never been open source. I don't know about Microsoft Edge. Uh, Microsoft, in the last year, Microsoft has made en enormous strides toward open sourcing a lot of the work that they did. You know, Bill Gates at one point associated open source, uh, the or open source movement to communism. <laughs> uh, and now wow. suddenly, now Microsoft thinks open source is great. So it's, <laughs> it's hard to know which projects they have open sourced, what their actual strategy is with that. Um, Chrome, Google Chrome, uh -huh. is open source, but it's open source in transparency not open source in the sense that it's designed for collaboration. Um, you can download the source content. It's the same with Android. You can actually download the source code. You can't but change any it. changes that you, yeah. well, any changes that you make to it stay on your computer. They they cannot be, or at least they cannot easily, be uplifted into the central code base and distributed to all users of that product. Google makes it very difficult yeah. for that to happen. And I think that they're trying to improve, They, but they have certain projects that are dedicatedly uh, open source projects, and Chrome, I don't think, is one of those that they really try hard to open source, um, or at least to practice that methodology. Uh -huh. uh, um, Safari is not open source. Um, oh, Opera was. Um, I don't think they are anymore. I'm um, trying to think of, there are a lot of smaller browsers out there, like Brave, that is open source. Um, yeah, but they're, they're, they represent a very, very small margin of the, of the market share for browsers. Okay. All right, was there any other topic you wanted to uh, go into real quick? Anything um, else to add? Or... Just that if you happen to be an aspiring translator or an aspiring, you're looking for a career in, uh, in localization, getting involved in open source and developing a long-term relationship with open source communities or within open source communities can only help you. Um, I know a lot of people get nervous when they talk about volunteering and, and free <laughs> work. Yeah. Um, but the benefits dramatically outweigh the cons. You you get a network of people that can vouch for the work that you've done. You can point back to a portfolio of contributions that you've made. Um, you can use that on a resume and point out that you have had a long-standing uh, commitment to an open source project. And very often employers um, look at that in a very positive light. They see well-roundedness, they see passion, they mm -hmm. see interest in professional development and, and ambition in people that have open source projects listed in their their applications and resumes. So don't be afraid, jump in, get your hands dirty. <laughs> open source is a good sandbox to go in, play with things, break other things, yeah. All right. I heard it from him. Mozilla needs your help. Alrighty. Well, thank you, Jeff, for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care.